Good morning and welcome back to the shop. I'm so happy you're here. Now that the still 038 is off my bench, let's move on to the next one. We've got lots to choose from here. I'm thinking this MS250 is next. Let's get it on the bench. Good morning. Welcome back to my workbench. Today we have a still MS250 on the bench and the customer says it's hard to start, it kicks back, and he wants it serviced. So I'm gonna do a quick visual of the saw here, and then we'll go outside and try to replicate his issue. So I'm going to make sure the chain, I'm just gonna examine it here. The chain is actually quite dull. I see lots of saws come in with dull chains. Um, a dull chain will create all kinds of other problems. So, um, the chain break is working. Bar nuts are both in place. I see the chain catcher is broken here, so we'll let the customer know that. Just make sure all my controls and safeties are working properly, and they are. Um, take a quick look at the fuel here. And the tank is full. It smells okay. The fuel's a little murky looking. There's some floaties in there. But we'll take it outside first and try to start it. And then when we come back in, we'll dump this fuel out. We'll go through this whole saw and we'll find out what the problem is. Let's take this saw outside and give it a start. I'll meet you out there. back in from starting the MS250. It definitely is hard to start. It's got some kick. It likes to pull the rope out of your hands. I had Tyler go out and start it too and um, something isn't quite right. So we're gonna um, go through this and see if we can find a problem. Okay, let's take the barn chain off this saw. It'll make it a bit, a bit easier to work on. Now let's dump the fuel out of this and have a look at it. Didn't have my mic on, back on now. Hopefully you can hear me okay. So we got the fuel dumped out of it here. The fuel tank looks clean inside. Fuel line looks fine. Fuel filter looks clean. We'll have a look at it closer in a minute. There is lots of floaties in the fuel. I don't know if you can see anything there. Probably not. I'm going to pull the fuel line out, get the fuel filter off, and we're going to pressurize the fuel line and the carburetor just to make sure there's no leaks. If 
The other side of this tool is a fuel line holder. So I'm just going to attach that on there and that'll help. That'll keep that fuel line up for me to get to. Now we are going to hook up our tool here and pressurize the fuel line and the carburetor to look for any leaks. All right, I'll get my tool here. This is my pressure vac tool. We'll hook it up to the fuel line. We'll make sure that we are on pressure, not vacuum. And we are gonna pump this up to 10 PSI. And we're gonna see if it'll hold pressure, if there's any leaks. Looks like we have no leaks. Get my tools out of the way here. I'll just drop that fuel line back in there for now. Okay, next we're going to remove our air filter cover, remove our air filter, remove our spark plug and have a look. So let's get this air filter cover off here. Pretty clean. I don't know how much work the saw has done. These air filters can be a, a little finicky to get off. These air filters can be deceiving. They they can kind of look clean, but not really be clean. This one isn't the worst I've seen, but it's also, it's not clean. So we're gonna clean that well before we put that back in. There's our winter shutter. Take that spark plug out. And the spark plug, spark plug is pretty, pretty fouled up actually. So a fouled up spark plug can cause a starting issue. So th this could be part of our problem. It's probably the original plug. Um, so we'll give this a new, a new plug when we service it. Something else to always check on these saws. You have a spark arrestor back in here. Um, some of them you have to take out to look. This one, I can see down in there. I can see that it's clean, so I'm not going to remove it. But there's a little screen in there, and it will get all carboned up, plugged up, and you'll need to take it out and clean it if it's dirty. This one's spotless, so I'm not going to remove it. Another sign of if this was plugged up, you would see usually oily mess all in front of the saw here. The saw's very clean. Next, I'm going to look down the spark plug hole here at the piston and cylinder to see what we can see. There's quite a carbon buildup on top of the piston. Uh, no scoring. It looks good that way, but there is a lot of carbon. So the, the carbon buildup, I do see this sometimes in lightly used homeowner chainsaws. And the commercial guys, we don't see any of this. These saws are meant to run wide open, full throttle. Um, if, if not the carbon, I just don't think the carbon burns off properly. So while we have the spark plug out of this, we're going to remove the recoil and we're going to check the flywheel key and the coil gap. Okay, T27, and I'll start removing this recoil. Get that out of the way. I'm gonna grab my tool here and I'm gonna check the gap between my flywheel and my coil. So I'll line the, there's a magnet. I'll line the magnet up with the coil. And I'm gonna put my gap tool right down in there. The coil has a top leg and a bottom leg. So you wanna have this touching both of them. So the top leg, feel it's supposed to be just enough room to get the tool in there. 
the top leg feels good. The bottom leg actually feels like there's like too much of a gap in there. That could be part of our problem. Before I set the coil gap, I'm going to check my flywheel key. Before I can remove the flywheel, I have to put my piston stop in. So it's going to be very hard to show you what I'm doing here, but I'll tell you what I'm seeing and what I'm doing as I go along here. So if I look down my spark plug hole and I rotate, I'm rotating the flywheel counterclockwise. The piston is down right now. I can see the exhaust port hole at the back of the cylinder. You do not want your tool going in the exhaust port hole. So I'm going to rotate the flywheel until the piston comes up and passes the exhaust port. We're past it now. I'm going to put my tool against the back of the cylinder. You can hear it back there. And then I'm going to rotate this further. There, my piston is stopped. You got to be very careful doing this. You do not want your tool to go into the exhaust port. You could break the tool or you could damage the piston. It's, you can't see very good down in there. You're basically fishing around in the dark, trying to not put your tool in the wrong hole. So once I have my piston stop in, I kind of keep my hand on the flywheel. I just, I don't want the flywheel coming back. I want this to stay in place. I'll keep my hand on it here and I'll turn it around so you can kind of see what I've done here. You can see my piston stop. Okay, with my stopper in place, I'm going to re remove my flywheel nut now. There we go. Take the nut off here. Okay, got my flywheel knocker here. Screw that down. I'm turn it back a turn. And I'll grab my hammer here. Just gonna wiggle it, it and it's loose. Perfect. I'll unscrew the knocker. And there's the flywheel off. So let's examine the flywheel here. So the flywheel key, I'll try to show you it here. Right in there, there's the key. It's perfectly fine. This is not the problem. The flywheel key is not sheared. So I'll go ahead and put my flywheel back on. Line my key up. And then I'll tighten it back down. Okay, so we're going to tighten our flywheel back down. So the procedure for the stop is the opposite of when we took it off. So instead of turning this counterclockwise, I'm going to turn this clockwise. I'm going to install my stopper. Lock it down. And there, the flywheel is tightened back down. Now let's regap this coil properly. We're going to check the coil gap now. So I've got my magnet lined up here. The top leg. Top leg, this fits tightly in there. The bottom leg is, is much 
looser than this. So we're going to adjust this. T27. Just a, a turn or two each. Just so we can move this a bit. I've got these loosened off and I'm going to, using my hand, hold the coil tight against my gapping tool. I'm going to tighten the top leg up first. And then the bottom. If you tighten the bottom first, it can actually pull the top away from the coil. So you want to tighten the top and then the bottom. There we go. And I'll just pull my tool back out. Okay, now we'll start putting the saw back together. I'm going to put the recoil back on. Okay, I'm going to put a new spark plug in this saw. BPMR 7A NGK. We'll put our winter shutter back on here. I'm going to give them a new air filter. You requested a full service new fuel filter, new spark plug, new air filter. And we'll replace the fuel filter. our air filter cover back on. Okay, let's take it outside and see if it starts any easier. I'll see you out there. Good morning. I've got a story for you about this chainsaw. So you see me go out yesterday and start it. And it started for me, but my first pull, like it, it jerked on me. It um, kicked back and it shouldn't. So I came back in, actually I took a break. I went out for a bit. I came back and I thought it's, it's gotta be the coil. We know it's not the flywheel key. Maybe it's the coil. I have a good used test coil here. So I put a coil on it, went out, no change. I came back in here. I know the coil's not the issue. I thought, what on earth is going on with this chainsaw? So I decided to just go back to basics and start over again. I did a full pressure vac test in the saw and the saw is tight. I test the tank vent, no problem. I had Tyler start this saw a couple times last night for me. And even on his no choke starts, I noticed smoke, like too much smoke. So I've pretty much been through this whole saw, except for one thing, the carburetor. So when this saw was dropped off, 
nothing the customer said signaled me to look at the carburetor. He said, hard to start and it kicks back. I hear this often with MS 250s because they are a high compression saw and they are hard to pull over. When I first became a steel dealer, one of the first things I was warned was to be careful who I sell MS 250s to because once they break in, they can be hard to start. If you have a bad arm, a bad shoulder, these may not be the right saw. This saw has an attractive price and an attractive size, but not an attractive pull start. So all that's left here for me to do is go to the carburetor. So I go to the carburetor. The first thing I notice is the limiter caps are both missing. And then I also notice that both jets are three turns out, which is not correct. So I went ahead and removed the carburetor and I removed the pump side and immediately noticed there was stuff missing inside. The fuel screen strainer isn't in here. So once I open a carb up and I see that someone's been into it, trying to re rebuild it or clean it or whatever, and there's parts missing and the jets are turned out, that's a big red flag. So I am not going to rebuild this carburetor um, I'm just going to, he's getting a new carburetor. They're not that expensive. It's, I think it's 60 or $65. Once I've opened a carb up and I see that somebody's been into it, there's parts missing and the jets are all turned out. I don't know what's happened to it. I don't know what the original problem was. I don't know why they did this. So I'm not going to spend any more time. I've, you've, you've seen how far I've been into this. So new carb. New air filter, new fuel filter, new spark plug. It's not the flywheel key. We tested the coil with a good used one. Pressure vac test, tank vent test. Um, in the end, this carburetor was the problem. So this saw starts and runs excellent. If you watch my 038 video a few days ago, you'll see I took the carb off and I specifically mentioned checking the jets to see where they were to see if they've been tampered with. Well, this saw has taught me a lesson the last few days, and that is to not let the simple things slip by. This isn't uncommon. I have saws dropped off all the time that have been tinkered with and tampered with, and the customer doesn't mention, by the way, my neighbor did this, or by the way, someone did that. If this man had said, by the way, somebody was into the carburetor, I would have went there first. But there was no mention, so here we are. It's my fault, this is on me, and I'm sure it'll happen again. Thanks for watching.